Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to make a clock. I'm sort of in the phase of rejigging my workshop. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in here but I'm sort of starting to think about what I want to be in here once I've down a new floor and ceiling and some walls and making a list of things that I'd like. One of those things that I'm currently missing is a clock. So I thought why not make a clock? In today's episode I'm going to be making my ideal workshop clock. First things first is to get an idea. I've always liked cuckoo clocks. It's fairly old fashioned. I thought about how I could make my own Katie's spin on a cuckoo clock. I started thinking about what makes a cuckoo clock. It's obviously got the clock part and it's got the cuckoo that comes out and it has the chime on the hour. So how can I digitalize this? Obviously the clock display, instead of having analog hands, the easiest way to do that is to make a um, display of seven segment displays. Four of those give the time digitally. My next thing to look at is the chirps. I can make that digital by doing beeps. I can beep using a little buzzer the amount of hours that it is on the hour. So that's also a nice simple problem. But the third thing that makes the cuckoo clock a cuckoo clock is the cuckoo. I think I'm gonna go for a robot. That seems quite cool, having a little robot come out on the hour. Now, I've got two options with this. I can either physically have a robot, maybe have a little 3D printed robot that can come out on uh, sort of servo actuated um, and have the robot appear through some doors like a cuckoo would be. But then the more I think about it, the more I think that is how the cuckoo comes out of the cuckoo clock. And I'm turning this all back to front. I've got the digital instead of the analog. I've got the beeps instead of the chirps, the robot instead of the cuckoo. But if he's still coming out, that's still like the cuckoo clock. So I'm sort of coming around to the idea of maybe instead having a little uh, LCD screen that can come on every hour and display a little animation of a robot. This brings one problem. I've never given animation a go, <laughs> computer animation. Um, so that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to learn, but I think I'm up for that challenge. With all those in mind, let's get started. So when I started thinking about how I was going to make my robot appear on the screen, I suddenly realized I was gonna to need to do an animation of some sort and I've never actually done anything like that. I know that there's Blender that I could use for doing this and I thought it'd be quite cool to learn. So I installed it, but I didn't know where to get started. Now, I uh, ran a code club in a primary school and I knew that there were code club tutorials for the children to do to learn Blender on the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website. So I decided what's stopping me from doing the kids' projects. So as you can see by all my ticks, I ran through all the Blender Basics tutorials and finished all that and I sort of got my head around it enough that I felt I was able to give it a go. So I first off made myself my little robot figure. It's not anything too complicated, but yeah, I followed the tutorial and I got him moving. So I can have him appearing on the screen. I've got him going away at the end of doing his animation for his actions. And then in the interim, I'm gonna have him shake his head the amount of hours it is. So instead of the cuckoo appearing once per hour, it will look left or it will look right. So he'll look left for one hour, but for two, he'd look left, right. And then in multiple, so three, left, right, left. So I've done these as separate animations so I can run 
each one left, then right, then left, however many times I need to do it. So I've got look left and look right. So that's my animation sorted. So now I can get on to putting my circuit on breadboard and then I will hopefully be able to test these animations on my little LCD screen. So I've set up my circuit on some breadboard so I can just test it all out before I put it on strip board and so I can get the code sorted and work out exactly where I want everything to be connected. I've only connected in two of the seven segment displays for now because there's a lot of connections to make and I'm just going to pull it apart and put it on the strip board but I can check all four of the digits using these two digits just by moving across wires. I've connected in my little buzzer sounder unit for making the beeps on the hour. I've connected in the screen and I've had to add a six volt regulator just to um, do the power for the seven segment displays. I had a little test on five volts and it wasn't quite enough to make. You could see the LEDs but it wasn't really visible um, well enough in a brightly lit room but six volts just makes it nice to view. Not too bright that it blinds you but you can read it easily. So let's have a look at the code. So I'm using NTP servers to get the internet time. I'm setting everything up where my pins are all connected. I've got this code for when it's on the hour where it will do a buzzer beep for what each hour that it currently is. And I've got my time get. It will go back and get internet time if it's available once a day to update. So this should update date when there's time clock changes in the UK our clocks going forwards and backwards once a year forwards once a year backwards uh, I've got this I've put in for screen for getting the screen to work but we will have a look at that in a bit and then the rest of it is just updating the display this library is set up for eight seven segment displays I could have changed it but it's just easier to pad it out when I'm sending it the time. So that's the code. The screen has been a little trickier. On the date sheets for these screens, there's a um, really handy list of serial commands. With these serial commands, I've got media in it, uh, which I can do. But then you have to give it a pointer to where the video file is you want to play and then you run the play command and it will play from the byte you've told it the start of the file is. Now this isn't something that I can instantly go, oh yes, that file is at this position. So it's taken a little bit more tinkering. What I did was I made my files in Blender like we saw earlier. And then I copied these files onto the SD card. I opened one of the files that I wanted to test it with in oh, Teta and found a point in the file that was recognisable. So this RIFFXK. Now this is then I've opened the SD card that I've put the files on and did a search for that and found that this is where that file starts on the SD card. So 00058000. So I thought that should be fairly straightforward. So I've done this screen right and told it that it's in 0058000. And then I've run the uh, play that AVI file sort of media command from the serial reference. However, as we'll see in a moment, it's not working. I'm really not sure. I've gone around this loads of times. I've looked at the examples, which have all been written for their C library, but I'm not using C. So I've been trying to work through the example, looking at the C and then going back and looking at 
where in the C library it's calling and it is calling the serial commands. In general, it's just causing me a headache. I'm going to leave that for now. If you've used the 4D system screens and you have played a video file off the SD card reader that's on the back of the screen, on the screen, please let me know how you managed to get it to work. We'll just go on without that. It's not ideal. I really want to show the robot. I've made the animations. I'm hoping I can get that to work. I might just need to look at a different screen or go back through more serial. I've used Google. I've done some searching. It seems like lots of other people have got stuck with this as well. So thankfully it's not just me, but that's not very useful. Let's get the clock working and the on the hour beeps working and we'll come back to that, hopefully. Hi. I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. So if I run the code, what I get is the screen resets. It tries to write that file that I was testing it with. It beeps the amount of hours it is on startup just as a test. So it's currently 12 o'clock. So I've got 12 beeps that have just happened and my minutes are 58. The display is all working just as I wanted it to work. I can move this common one. So this end one is the one and the two, so that's 12, and then I can put it back to display the minutes. Now, this will be a really good test because when it ticks over on the hour, I should get 13 pips from my sounder. And there we go, on the hour. So I'm happy all that's working. The screen's not working, but I'm gonna still connect that up and hopefully I will manage to get it working. But for now, let's keep focused on the clock section. Um, so I'm going to strip board it up and then we can have a look at the case to fit it all in for assembly. So my case I've designed in FreeCAD and it's made of two parts. I've got this front section and a back section. Now the front section has uh, cutouts for the seven segment display and the screen. And if we flip it round, see, so they'll fit in here. They've got the locating pins for each of the seven segment displays and for holding the screen in place. I've got a holder for the buzzer and a hole for the DC input for powering the unit. I've got holes here to insert um, heat certs so I can screw the back cover on and then my back cover has holes so when I screw this on the end of the bolt won't be protruding from the case. It will sit flush to a wall even and a cutout there for wall mounting it. I'm going to send these to the 3D printer. I've got these bits of space here. I thought maybe I could print some like little decorative bits 
but I haven't really had the right creative thoughts on what that decorative bit could be. Uh, if you have an idea for some decoration that I can put in these two areas, uh, please let me know over on the Element 14 community and maybe I will make your idea a design and print it out and stick it on my clock. Uh, that would be really cool. So yeah, let me know if you're more creative than I am. Um, so yeah, I'm going to print that and then we can get assembling the electronics inside of it. So the first things I have to do before I can assemble it is I need to put M3 heat certs into the corners so I'll be able to screw the back of the case on. And on the seven segment displays, they've got these tabs so they can be clicked together. But this end one isn't needed and I've not put a cutout in the case. So I'm just going to cut that tab off and then I'll be able to assemble it all in the case. Not three o'clock yet. A little longer than a few minutes later. Three o'clock, time to run. In general, I'm pleased with this project. I've got a clock, it's updating all automatically from the internet uh, and using the Pico other real-time clock uh, that I hadn't used before. It's slightly disappointing with this LCD screen. It's there, it should work. It's gonna need a bit more tinkering. I think I know a solution. Well, I've got two options. So there is a uh, C library for Arduino which um, is provided by 4D Systems, which looks like it should just work. I started looking at rewriting that library in MicroPython. There's just so many layers, I paused that. Now I could re-look at that, or I could write the rest of the software on the Pico and change it to use the, to UC and then change the Arduino C library to work with the PK in C like that. But my other option is that on 4D systems, they have a uh, Windows um, environment. I used it back on the bike speedometer project and that has video all implemented that you import it in the software. It will convert it and it will give you commands to run your program. Now, I'd really like to have given this a try when you buy these screens, you can buy them as the screen or as a starter kit. Now to use the Windows program, you need the programming adapter, which is this uh, 4D Systems UPA Universal Programming Adapter. Now I have one of those from doing the Bike Speedometer project, but I have turned my workshop upside down trying to find it. Um, and I can't seem to find it anywhere. It's not in my box of programming adapters. It's not in my screen box. If I can find that, I can give it a go of using that program to write the video files to the um, memory on the screen. Now I think that might then just convert it into exactly what it's looking for and know where to find the video file, which is what was causing a problem with the serial commands. If you've got um, one of these 4D system screens to work with the serial commands to play a video. That would be really handy because I've got those lovely animations to show on there. And I've got comms to the screen, it's just displaying the wrong bit of the file. And the only other thing that's remaining on this project is 
things to decorate it with. It's a rather bland box. I've got these areas here and around the screens. I would love to add some decoration and just pretty it up a bit, but that's where you guys come in. Send me some ideas of what you think would be nice to be printed on here um, and I'll 3D print them and stick them on and show you which, if there's multiple ideas, which ideas I picked and what I've done with it. Um, because it'd be nice to see what you think would look pretty on it. For now that's all. If you can answer any of those questions please head on over to the Element 14 community um, using the link below uh, and let me know your feedback and any suggestions you have. But for now that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye!